All right, everybody, welcome to the, another episode of TW Twenty Twenty and our playthrough of Georgia Championship Wrestling in the Territory Days Nineteen Seventies mod. Uh, we are at Friday, Saturday, the first week of February. We're at another episode of uh, Live Atlanta Wrestling, and we're just gonna hop right in with our first match on the card. So we have Buddy Fuller taking on Nikolai Volkov and the ongoing storyline of uh the Odell Odell's army taking on Travel Guerrero and now Buddy Fuller being added to the mix. Uh, a decent match. Buddy Fuller defeated Nikolai Volkov at eight seventeen by pinfall. Uh Buddy Fuller had an entering performance of sixty and Nikolai Volkov had an entering performance of thirty two. So Nikolai's getting up there. Uh pretty decent match for him too. Um hoping to get Nikolai's pop up so that we don't have to keep using him to as a stooge for uh, Odell's army but uh, that's just kind of where he's at right now so <sighs> Buddy Fuller had an in-ring performance of 60, 32 and the segment pro er, progressed the storyline we think it kind of had like a big schmoz where uh, the entirety of Odell's army comes out and tries to jump Buddy but Buddy's ready for him uh, and kind of has this standoff with him where he holds his ground in the ring against him while Odell barks orders at his men with the Mongol looking on. Uh, this is going to be, I think, our uh, next big match, probably for either the last week of TV this month, or uh, which would actually be a pretty good send-off for Buddy, will be uh, Mongol versus Fuller for the TV title. So... Uh, the performance of Mongol was good, and uh, the angle got hotter. Per and Nikolai and O struggled uh, in the segment, but uh, you know they're also fairly younger and not as good on the mic yet. So <sighs> well, we'll see what happens in the next segment. Uh, this is just kind of an in-between match. Uh, we had the amazing Zuma going over Les Wolf. Uh, Les Wolf is not. Uh, wrestled at all hardly during this uh, playthrough. Um, I used him before as like a Nick Bockwinkle stooge, but um, in this case, he's working for other companies, and uh, I kind of just wanted Zuma to have a win on TV and uh, try to get some momentum going his way. Uh, 39 rated segment, uh, 44 for the Amazing Zuma, 28 for Les Wolf. <coughs> Ooh, sorry. And uh, Assassin 2 probably could have done a better job putting the match together. We did have a Bachwinkle promo about Nick Bachwinkle just hyping out his involvement on the show uh, going forward. I re I plan on actually doing the storyline with Nick. It's just I, d I don't really have him. I, with all the tag teams being the main focus right now, I'm not really sure where I want to get him in. So uh, we will be doing something with Bachwinkle in the future. And then our main event. A crowd about that had great heat and good wrestling. The Torres brothers defeated El Mongol and the Big O in 12 minutes 35 seconds when Alberto Torres pinned the Big O for Cannonball. And during this match, just kind of like a little a bit of an over the top match, uh, we had uh, run ins from Assassin Number One and Buddy Fuller. Big O was weakly struggling to keep up with everybody else in the ring. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with everybody's performances. Even Big O only getting a 37, like, that's that's still fine for where he's at. Um, advanced two storylines in this segment, so everything went pretty well. Uh, Big O and El Mongo don't really work together as a team, but that's fine because I don't, they're not going to be used as a team very often, if at all. Uh, and I'll just have to consider putting Mongo and Volkov or doing Big O and Volkov as uh, tag team partners going forward. Uh, 55 for Ramon, 67 for Alberto, uh, O for 37, which is still pretty good for him, and El Mongol for 62, which is lower than where he's been at, but also this isn't really a match that suits his strong, his, uh, strengths. And then we had a big schmoz at the end as well, where, uh, basically everybody runs out who wasn't already involved in this and just starts, uh, Fighting with each other. Uh, we've, we'll set up a six man next week between the Torres brothers and Buddy Fuller and uh, Homer Odell's army and the Assassins. 
which I haven't figured out which members are going to use for Odell's army. I'm probably going to keep both the assassins and just throw, maybe not Mongol, maybe throw in like, uh, maybe throw Nikolai in and then have the assassins go over. Maybe that's the, the go to. All right. And uh, we gained popularity in two regions. That was our one of our higher rated uh, TV shows, I think. 56. Uh, lost its popularity in one region, though. Uh, yeah, this definitely tells me that we need more Bachwinkle. And we had the professional available, but I, 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 another guy who I don't... I just don't have faces for them to take on. Plus, with only an hour of uh, TV time with two uh, prominent tag teams. And we didn't even feature uh, Roberto or... Uh, Cyclone are the Blue Demons. So, <laughs> and the show rating was up. So I don't know what that shows. All right, so we got decisions open. So uh, we've completed our negotiations with Frank Martinez. He's gonna stick around. Uh, we are also negotiating with Bill Dundee. Uh, I was able to get Dundee to into a contract the only issue is we are probably going to have to pay for transportation which is going to suck because he's literally going to be flying from australia but the hope is that if we book dundee enough that he will move to the states which i'm pretty sure he'll have a better place on the card than where he's at right now um big o's charismatic can you just reach your start nice uh 0.05 so we're up from last time so that's good and uh, everybody increasing their production quality, which I, I don't like. Don't like that. Uh, there's also an event that uh, I unfortunately deleted, but if we take a look at our roster, um, and we look at, where are you? Jimmy Garvin. Uh, well, actually, we'll have to go to this view. We can see real quick that Mr. Garvin is now GCW to view and search. We now see that Mr. Garvin is, where can we see that? Kind of don't know why it doesn't come up as the news. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but basically, uh, Tom Ernesto uh, took Jimmy Garvin under his wing, and he's now uh, a protege of Assassin Number One. So that is going to do big boosts for his stats. So I think that uh, definitely does secure Jimmy Garvin on our roster for a while. I'm just not sure how we would use Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy would be a great tag team guy. Uh, just going to need, like, either... He needs, like, a monster to look out for him. And he needs to be the, the, the shit-talking heel. Or he needs to be uh, with another smaller guy that is also good at talking. So, uh, I don't think we're going to go Freebird, Jimmy Garvin. That's... No, I don't think anybody wants that. I, I really like Fabulous Jimmy. Uh, but we will see. I do like the idea of him and Norvell still. It's just... Uh, I'm not sure if uh, that's going to work out long term. Just because I'm not really... I, it just seems like kind of an awkward pairing, Norvell and uh, Jimmy Garvin. I feel like Norvell would be like good with like a another foreign heel or something because they can both play off of because Norvell does play the uh uh downbeaten minority thing and he usually teams with Sputnik but I can't get Sputnik so kind of at a time at least at the moment I can't get Sputnik I guess yeah I guess that's also a thing I should probably be watching with Sputnik Moreau if I plan on using Norvell Austin uh becomes available I also don't know what Randy Rose is doing right now that might be something to also look up. Are we just search for anybody? I don't know if Randy Rose would be active yet. 
He was kind of old in the 80s, so... I don't see Randy Rose. Maybe he's like mid-70s? We'll have to see. In any case, let's uh, advance a few days and see what happens. Overall, I do think the show is going in a better direction. Uh, I think one thing the AI... Uh, retirement for Roy McClarity. Yeah. Got more decisions available. Uh, we were able to side build on D, so that's good. Uh, Frank did take the job with... Oh, no. Doug Gilbert was made a contract offer by Stampede Wrestling. But it's out the window. Looks like Stampede already redacted it. What is Stampede? Stampede is giving it, because I was looking up Larry Hennig uh, off camera, and they apparently signed Larry Hennig to a written deal, or to a, um, what the hell, a, uh, what's that called? The words escape me. Oh my god. <laughs> Major brain fart. Exclusive, an exclusive deal, which was a lot. I'm not, not sure what that was about. Um, yeah, cause Stampede is still considered like twenty-first in the world, but they are writing exclusive contracts for people. I, I don't, I don't understand. I really don't. And like, this roster is so weird. Wait, what? They don't have Larry Hennick anymore? What happened? I don't... I don't understand. Are they losing money or something? No, that's not the full roster. Roster search. That's literally their roster. I'm just not understanding something maybe that's not yeah there's there's a whole lot of people on the roster that aren't coming up on the roster not sure why that is something has some setting I have if I just reset just in case and then search okay yeah there we go yeah they have a good I mean I'm pretty sure we have a bigger rest, uh, roster than them, but they're somehow hiring people for uh, private contracts, and I'm not sure how that's happening. Really not. Abdullah's over there right now. Doesn't look like Abdullah's exclusive, though. Looks like he's getting hired out. So it's not very, everybody. It's very weird. Very weird. If you look at the contracts... Yeah, they're giving out exclusive written contracts to like half the roster. What what is this? Eleven thousand dollars to Tarzan Tyler. Mind you, Tarzan Tyler was a big deal at this time, but like And that's like almost two years. Yeah, I don't I don't know about this. I don't know about that, Chief. I don't know about all that. But in any case, it looks like they didn't work out with their uh um, contract with the professionals so that works in our favor. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Let's go negotiate with him. It doesn't say that he's got any rival offers going on, so we will just take it. <laughs> Run with it. Oh, man, what a day. Uh, we got more decisions. Contract negotiations are completed with El Mongol. Oh. Well, it's time to start taking those heavy money losses. Um, we're still not sure who the owner is going to be of GCW, so I guess we'll find that out eventually. I don't see it being me. I, 
they'll bring somebody else in. Oh, there's another new decision. <sighs> the position of CEO, they inform you that you would have one million three hundred and fifty three thousand seven hundred and one dollars to spend. Well, we originally became the booker, but I guess now we own the whole company. Bada boom. All right. <laughs> so this brings up an interesting thing because I feel like I should still have uh, owner goals and such. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to have to come up with some custom goals for myself and custom punishments if I uh, don't meet them. I'm not sure. But in any case, for better or worse, we now own the company. <laughs> The hostile takeover of J.J. Dillard is finally complete. Um, I really didn't think they were going to hire us just because we didn't really have much booking reputation. But hey, there you go. We got positive momentum. Our momentum's going up. We're, we're kicking ass. We got another house show tonight, and uh, we're going to kill it. So that will be all for today's episode of GCW. Tw GCW 1970s Territory of Days Mod Daddy. <laughs> Just verbally gave up there at the end. Uh, if you guys have any ideas for owner goals or anything like that, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take it easy, everybody. Have a good day.